Do you need an airplane repoed? We've got the guy for you. On this episode of In the Hangar. Welcome to a special on location edition of In the Hangar. I'm Christy Wong. And I'm Dan Milliken. We are at Air Venture. This is the Flying Eyes booth. If you go to flyingeyesoptics.com, you can use our discount code, taking off all caps, one word, for 10% off. Also, this is all brought to you by clemensinsurance.net. Talk to Jerry, he will save you money on your insurance. You know who else will save you money? Who? A repo? <laughs> a repo man. So Kevin Lacey, Kevin, thanks for being on the show. How much hassle do you get from having done the airplane repo, repo show? Oh, you mean from the general public, how much hassle do I get? <laughs> uh, well, generally it's like, uh, my airplane's paid for, don't you come looking for it. You no. know? I mean, it's, it's things of that nature, you know, that, uh, and I generally remind them that I've been hearing that for a long time now. You yeah. Know, so don't try to you're known me. for a lot more than just that. Well, I got a stack of paperwork that says you're not correct on that. So, no. <laughs> you know. All right. Well, now, Christy and you guys go way back. Um, this is the first time for, for you and I to really meet, but I've really been enjoying your book. And, uh, oh, well, thank you. Yeah. And, and, well, and especially for me, because, where the book takes place, well, your life, it's, it's an autobiography, is I, I'm familiar with, that's where I live. So I'm very familiar with the area, and so I hear you saying flying out of Redbird or, or whatever, it's, I can picture it. So in those early days, you talk about buying your first airplane. Can you recount that story? Yeah. Um, when I told Mom that uh, I didn't have a car anymore, and I had a wrecked airplane and a motorcycle. She thought I had a death wish. You know, I was 19 years old. I was working for a little junkyard. I called him Boneyard Bobby. We, we rebuilt wrecked little Cessnas or what have you, rebuilt them, stripped them, painted them, built engines for them, painted them all up and sell them and for insurance jobs or whatever it was, you know. And uh, he had a little flight school there as well. And so some of the adventures we got into going out to hunt for airplanes and airplane parts for the airplane projects we had in the shop, I run across this little tailor craft and was sitting upside down next to a barn and it and it just had that smile on his face and said, help me, help me. I have done, I have seen that. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, poor little airplane, you know, the boss man I think was a little miffed at me because he couldn't find me to help me, you know, help him do what do he was the real doing, work. looking for stuff. And so I'm out there noodling with that airplane. I said, hey boss man, you think this airplane's for sale? He goes, go talk to the man. I'm sure everything over here is for sale. So. I was hoping my boss was going to go help me out with it. He left me on my own to go in there and negotiate with this guy. And this guy's kind of a shrewd guy sitting over there behind the desk, you know, looking at me all kind of. Keep in mind, I'm, you know, a 19-year-old kid. I don't know anything about anything, you know, at that point in time, except that's going to be my airplane somehow or another. So, you know, eventually I wound up going back to Tulsa, sold my car, came back with 1500 bucks cash, and handed it to the man with a trailer and a truck to haul it back to Tulsa, or to Sand Springs, actually. And he gave me a couple of hundred bucks back. I said, what's this about? He said, well, your boss man was pretty sure you were going to come up with the money to get that airplane, so we put a deposit down on it for you. And I'm pretty sure he wants you to get that deposit back. You gave me 1500 bucks. <laughs> he's giving you a couple of hundred bucks back here. It's like, you know, cool. You know, so the boss was a pretty good mentor, and yeah, you know, he put up with my juvenile delinquency for a bunch of years, but he also made me work and he made me learn things. You know, I mean, there's a book over there, damn it, go over there and figure it out. You know, okay, I'll try. The best but, way. Yeah, it is. You know, and so uh, that little Taylor Craft, I was out having a blast with that thing. I mean, it was ugly. It was ugly as <laughs> sin. I mean, it, but it was so much fun to fly. Had you even had tailwheel at that point? No. <laughs> so how did you learn to fly it? By almost crashing it several times before I even put the wings on it. You know, oh, I that's thought, right. You taxied it without the wings on. Oh, Jesus Christ. You know, I got that little old engine all built up, got my props. I had my prop at the prop, strop, at the prop shop. I got the engine built up, you know, I put a new windshield in it. The biggest expense was an ELT battery for it, I think, you know. And I'm doing all this on the shoestring poor boy type stuff because I, I don't have a nickel. You know, I don't have any money. And so I got the engine back on there. I'm sure as heck wanting to run this engine. And the boss and all them are off to lunch. And I would take my lunch break and noodle with it, you know. And then after work, you know, I had to run off to go to Spartan School of uh, Aeronautics up there because that's what I was going to school up there. So I took advantage of all my lunch breaks. And I worked as, I, I worked as best I could on the dang airplane. 
It was uh, having a pretty good time. The engine's all ready to go, you know, but I don't have a prop, you know. So I'm looking around up and down the flight line. Well, there's Jay's Luscom down there. It's got a 65 horsepower motor on it. That prop ought to bolt right on. <laughs> now keep in mind, you need to know, know old Jay there. He's a pretty gruffy old boy. He was a Vietnam helicopter pilot vet. Shot down three times, you know, and just the kind that would love to pick on me, right? You know, I mean, kid, you know, I mean, anyway. So I swiped the prop off his airplane and I put it on there on, the, on a Taylor craft and decided I'm going to run this engine. And I'm out there hand propping it, hand propping it. And, ah, man, I can't figure out what it's going to take, you know. I hadn't quite identified or figured out exactly what it takes to start that little engine yet. This is my first run with an A65, right? So finally, it pops. It starts and it jumps the chalks and it goes running that oh, way. Oh no! I go chase with no it, wings. With no wings on it and nobody in it, and it jumps the chalks and it takes off across the ramp going this way and the gas pump is right over there by that truck and it's going that way. Oh my God! I run as fast as I can to catch up to it. And finally got the tail steered off a little bit so it runs off off the ramp and into the grass out there. Slowed it up enough for me to catch up to it. Oh whew, man. I finally got it stopped. I got the power back to idle, and I'm standing there sweating for a little bit. And I think, well, heck, I may as well crawl in it, you know, and do the engine run and do what I was here to do, right? <laughs> so I got the engine running pretty good. I start taxing it around it. And, you know, this dang tailwheel stuff ain't too terribly bad, you know? No. I think I could figure out the nose wheels back there. I could steer it like, yeah, I kind of get it, you know? Well, nobody's coming, you know? Nor we had an old chalky road coming up to the, to, up to the hangar in the FBO there. And, you can see people coming to the airport for, you know, 15 minutes before they get there for the chalk dust in the air, you know. And I, well, nobody's coming yet, so I guess it's still lunchtime. I think I'm just going to taxi down the end of the runway and, you know, try this out. So with no wings on the little airplane, you know, I just kind of line up on the runway. I look around and I kind of ease the throttle in. I ease the throttle in. I shove the power. I shove the elevators full forward. Finally, I just stabbed it all the way in, and tail comes up, and boy, I'm doing, oh, this is cool, man, all right. Pretty soon it starts hopping a little bit to the right. I go, oh, crap. I'm on those rotor pedals learning how to two-step all over again, you know. We bounce <laughs> off to the left side, it goes to the right side again. Next thing I know, I don't know what the heck happened. I was off by the side of the runway going around the windsock. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Son of a gun. It scared the crud out of me. So I thought... If this is how hard it is to fly a tail dragger, I don't know if I got the skills for this. So I taxied back out to the runway. I looked down the road to see if there was anybody coming just yet. And there was nobody out there. So I, I'm going to try this again. This can't be that hard. So I back down around the dadgum runway I go. And about the same place I was the first time around, that thing started hopping sideways and tail in the air, ripping down the runway. I don't know how fast I was going, but it was pretty fast. Scared the crap out of me. I keep thinking about old Jay's Luscombe and his prop over there that's on my airplane. Now I'm going to have to pay for two props to get fixed. Well, down around the runway, down around the windsock I go, and I kind of sort of <clears throat> clean my britches out a little bit, and I think, well, okay, nobody's coming yet. I'm going to give it one more run, so back down the runway, and here I go. Oh, man. You know what, you may as well order up ice cream for my humble pie because I ate a whole lot of it that day and it tastes a whole lot better with ice cream on it. <laughs> and I went back up there to the taxi, to the hangar, to the ramp up there. About the time this dust trail comes running up and I pull up and shut the airplane down and I'm getting out of it and here comes Jay running. Hey, Kev, wow, man, I see you got your prop. That's pretty stupid you trying to go down the runway with no, no uh, wings on the airplane. I said, well, yeah, that's probably not good. About that time, Jay turns around and looks down the flight line and sees his Luscombe down there missing a prop. Oh, no. He chased me around that airport for about an hour. It was, <laughs> it was not fun. But, you know, the sad part is I think he almost gave himself a heart attack chasing me. Cause back well, then, then you could have kept the prop, right? Well, well, yeah. Back then I was pretty lean and pretty fast, you know. I mean, I'm still pretty lean and I'm... Still fairly fast for an old guy, but you know. <laughs> I mean, anyway, that was uh, that was my Taylor Craft. And then when I finally got the wing struts, I went down to the boneyard where Boneyard Bobby had, and uh, found some wing struts that were down there. And I started chopping them up. I got the AC forty three thirteen out, looked what scarf patches and splices are supposed to look like on a wing strut, and I welded me up some repairs. And by golly, here we go now. So I got the wing struts hanging on the side of the airplane to stab one wing on it, get the struts up there, the other wing up, ready to go. Dead gum it. Now I'm out there. I pull that little dumpling out onto the runway, and I said, oh, boy, I hope this turns out better than the last time I tried this. I got on the runway, shoved the power forward, shoved the yoke all the way to the firewall, 
radar power is what I call it. You know, your knuckles <laughs> all the way up to the radar, right? And that little dumpling tail come up. Wow, <laughs> this is kind of cool. Popped it up in the air. Holy crap, this is fun. It <laughs> started flying around and next thing I knew, I was doing touch and goes out there. And I mean, I wore that runway out for about the next 45 minutes for my lunch break. And everybody come back, hey, it handles a little better with, uh, with wings on it there, huh, Kev? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sure does, you know. But I had no idea, but you know, back then we didn't have any requirements for a tailwheel endorsement. We didn't have any requirements for a complex endorsement, a high performance. None of that stuff existed back then, you know. So we just you boss just man, got in and flew. Boss got man, in and figured it out. Boss man threw me the keys to a Bonanza. Says, "Go pick up uh, Mr. Nail's Bonanza up at Vanita. Here's the uh, take one two Sierra up there. Pick up his Bonanza and bring it home." Okay. You ever flown a Bonanza? You don't need to worry about that. You know how to start the engine, don't you? Yep. You can get it started. You can get it home. Bring it home. We got to do an annual on it. Okay. So, you know, you, essentially, if you went back to the regs of the day, I don't know how they are today because I think I learned them all already, you know. <laughs> uh, but back then, you could check yourself out in any kind of airplane you wanted to. Oh, wow. I mean, you really could. You have to go back and re look at the revisions to the regulations and see how they've been modified and changed over the years. And some of the changes are not so good, in my opinion. But, you know, anyway. Whatever happened to that Taylor Craft? That little Taylor Craft is sitting in my hangar at Aero Country Airport today. Yes. Oh, I love that. Love that. Now, it's, love. now, now it's uh, three months out of annual. But, you know, I mean, I love that little airplane. I've had it for, I, I'm not going to say, but at least give my years. age away. Yeah. But uh, I've had it for, you know, most of its life. That's amazing. By the way, that little dumpling was also... Arthur Murray Dance Studios corporate airplane back in the day. No way. It also belonged to a character named Raymond Shy. Now my airplane did not, he did not use it, but he trained John Glenn how to fly in a 39 model Taylor craft. Wow. And he had my airplane over there and he traded my little 46 model Taylor craft, serial number 9709, even money for a Staggerwing Beechcraft in 1951. Wow. Wow. A uh, 65 horsepower, two seat Taylor Craft, even money for a Staggerwing Beach. Wow. That's incredible. Well, you know, uh, and you know, I, I, I went through all the mic microfish that the FA had, you know, back at the time. You know, and I'm uh, old enough. And I went, okay, I went back and I wanted to find everybody that ever owned that little dumpling just because I got it, you know, you know, and I, if they're still alive, I wanted to let them know I'm going to take care of it, you know, and preserve it and be a good caretaker. <laughs> Of course, you know, sometimes I'm a little abusive to it, but that's okay. But, you know, the guy that had the Staggerwing Beechcraft paid like 500 bucks for it, government surplus. Oh, wow. He couldn't afford to feed the gas tank on that thing. So he goes over there and Raymond's, you know, says, well, shoot, I'll just trade you this one for that one. He goes, okay. So they trade. So now here's Raymond. And, and he came by my hangar in Addison Airport back in the day and visited with me and brought me a book with all these little stories about his events up there. His daughter was really cool to talk to, you know. And so the he's loading up the Staggerwing to do a charter trip. He's got passengers loading up in this Staggerwing beach craft, and here comes this guy with a CAA saying, Ray, Ray, hold up a minute. Don't you think you ought to get a pilot certificate? I ain't got time for that right now. I got a charter trip. I just go. <laughs> and he jumps in the airplane and flies off. Wow. Three times in a row, the feds were turned away, and finally, okay, I got a, I got one seat open in the back. You sit down and shut up. And don't mess with my passengers. And the guy gets out of the airplane, and gives him a commercial certificate. <laughs> I mean, this is the way it worked back in the day. You That's know, that's quite a check ride. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you mentioned you mentioned Aero Country, and I want to talk about that Aero Country Airport because, speaking of good mentors, you have become that good mentor to a group of young individuals at Aero Country Airport. You know, one of the coolest unexpected consequences of being on television, and I don't understand why, but one of the coolest unexpected consequences is that kids seem to think that I made flying look cool, and they want to go fly. They want to get in the game. They want to be part of this. And so that was, uh, you know, I was overwhelmed by it. You know, as many kids were sending me messages on social media, you know, before the TV show, I didn't have social media. Nobody knew who I was except my friends and my, my clients, my bankers and my lawyers and stuff, you know. And I was perfectly happy that way. I got my twin command. She got my T-Craft sitting over there in the hangar. I'm 
comfortable as I could be, you know, leave me alone. Spent nine <laughs> months in Africa. I'm at home having a good time, playing with my little airplanes, buzzing around my tea craft, you know. And it's, uh, so uh, the kids found me and constantly were showing up at my hangar and asking me for help. How do we get in the game? And so me and a buddy of mine, he was the uh, last guy selected to fly the SR-71. Oh, wow. Who was uh, Colonel Spanky, Greg Spanky Barber. Uh, he did not get to fly the 71, but he wound up in the U-2 program for several years. We've been friends for a long time. He kept his luscom over there at my hangar. We're sitting there eating beer and drinking pizza one night, you know, and, and he's, geez, kid, Kev, we got to find something for these kids to do. And I thought, well, you know, there's 15 kids milling around the hangar, you know, tearing my toolbox apart and just noodling with stuff. And I thought, you know, let me consult with a friend of mine, Michael Z, down at Lakeland Aero Club and talk to him a little bit about how his organization works. Next thing we know, we started the Tango 31 Aero Club. We had a barn fan Cessna 150 that arrived at the hangar on a trailer. And these kids put that little dumpling together. They built the engine. They stripped all the paint off of it. They painted the airplane. And one of the club kids, one of the original club kids, flew his solo cross country from Aero Country to Fond du Lac, which is about 10 miles down here, yep. before he had a pilot certificate. Because anyway, he, you know, so I went down, I landed over there with him, jumped into 150 with him so he could fly into Oshkosh. And uh, that was actually really cool for him. You know, he's now got a private pilot certificate. He's got his airframe power plant mechanic certificate. He is almost ready to get his instrument rating. And he is now a lead mechanic for Cirrus Aircraft over at McKinney, Texas. Wow. Yep. That's amazing. Now, I love what you're doing for these kids. Well, the worst of them is the hammer. You know, uh, <laughs> I think he was scared of heights or something for a while. But we wound up getting him through his airframe power plant mechanic certificate, got him a gig down at Bombardier Aircraft Services at Love Field. He's working on Challengers and Globals. He's now first shift lead down there, hauling down some major bank. He wound up getting his, air, got, getting his inspection authorization earlier this year. And he comes to me and looks me in the eye. He goes, you know, Kev? He goes, I was kind of leaving the airplanes up for the rest of the kids to get their certificates in. I think it's time for me to get mine now. Mm -hmm. And so in, in less than six months, we, we, got, we worked, through, worked with him. He got his pilot pilot certificate about a month or so ago. His first cross country was to here to Oshkosh from Aero wow. Country. From Aero Country. Yeah. That is quite a cross country. Yeah, we brought 14 kids up here with us, so, you know. So, Kevin, in your, in your book and what you're doing now ties with it as well. You, it sounded like you wanted to be a pilot. You didn't want to be an aircraft mechanic. But, you know, the school was doing a little bit of a bait and switch with all the Vietnam vets that were being released. And so you ended up, you know, turning wrenches while you worked on slowly getting your pilot's license. Do you think today we have, we're heading towards an A&P crisis? Absolutely. You know, like I said, the, uh, in the repossession business, you know, once I've captured an airplane, it's my care, custody, control. I've got power of attorney by the owner, being the bank or the finance company, whatever, leasing company, whoever it is. And it's my responsibility to see that the airplane is preserved properly. And you go to Chapter 12 and Chapter 10 in the maintenance manuals, you'll find if the airplane is going to be stored for 30 days, if it's going to be stored for 180 days or whatever it is. And you got to find somebody to take care of that thing. Now, I'm getting a little long in the tooth, and it's not up to me to go crawling in the wheel well and checking the accumulator every three days, you know, on a 747 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. i got to find people to do that. And finding people that can actually do it and will do it is becoming more and more difficult. Now, even if you find somebody that is qualified, most of these morons can't identify a bad safety wire job if you pointed it out to them. <laughs> so, you know, when I talk about this, you know, even little Thunder standing over there right now, she gets her fingernails dirty, peeling, you know, stripping paint, and doing whatever it is needs to be done. She can even twist safety wire. And I don't think her career goal is to be, you know, in the maintenance shop, but she's got some good basic background and understanding of it. The, uh, the, it's, we're in a heap of trouble with what I see. Yeah. The old guys like me, with the tribal knowledge and the skills of how to make this thing work. Oh, you know what? If I bypass that, you know, pin C and B on this little cannon plug, that'll make that work over there, you know, and then we can get this airplane out of here. And, you know, some of it's a little trickery, you know, to make this thing work. But, you know, some of these folks just don't have that, that aptitude or that skill when they come out of yeah. charm school.
We what? need to make AMPs look cool again. Yeah. Well, so Kev, that we can draw Kevin more people. Yeah, yeah we exactly. <laughs> we can. We need to draw more of the youths into. Well, it. and I think that what he's doing with the 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 Arrow Country the club, and working with. I mean, those guys are not just getting their pilot's license; they're turning wrenches, right? Every one of them. Yeah. So here's here's the deal. And as long as we can make it run this way, we're probably the biggest enemies of the box schools and what have you. And I really right. don't care because these kids most of the time couldn't afford to go pay a hundred thousand dollars or sign up for a debt to get you know 300 hours in their logbook and a couple of certificates but these youngsters here they earn their rights to fly the airplane for the price of gas with an instructor i don't think we've got a single aero club member yet that has spent more than 1800 bucks earning their pilot certificate but they're also wow. doing this in airplanes that they maintained built and restored they build the engines they do the avionics install and they do the paint jobs Sweat equity. I like it. I like it too. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. It's a it's an honor and a uh, privilege to to meet you. I've been enjoying your book. Where can people get your book? Well, at the present time, since we happen to be at the greatest show on earth, Air Venture Oshkosh 2023, you can go right over there at the EA warehouse and. I think I'll be over there signing it if memory serves uh, two o'clock on Thursday, I think, and uh, be doing an autograph session, signing books over there. If you are not here at Oshkosh and you can't find us anywhere else, uh, go look on Amazon. I think you can find us just fine on Amazon. And, yep. Uh, I'm thinking and about fly it like you stole it. Fly it like you stole it, the early years. The early years. There, so is there the later years coming? Well, you know, Here's the how it got started is I got my insurance agent and I was down in Brazil for three years and I was, you know, where's Joe Merchant, you know, and I, I keep getting these emails. So I was sending emails home once a week to about 75 or 100 of my closest friends with a picture of some wild event that happened down there. My insurance agent just kept sending back like she's laughing. She goes, you don't take these emails and write a book. I'm going to do it. And so I thought, well, you know, you can't just start in Brazil getting busted at Rio International <laughs> Airport for breaching security, you know? I mean, you kind of got to lay the groundwork for how did you get there and what kind of what kind of background did you get that give you the nerve to jump in a fence at an international airport, you know, in a foreign country where they speak Portuguese? And, you know, I mean, I speak Texan. <laughs> right, yes, you do, and very well. And I'm from Austin, so I totally get it. Well, all right, so go buy Kevin's book. Um, Kevin, you have a website or anything? Do you know what a website is? Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, I think it's TexasAirFleet.com, as a matter of fact. You know, I think it, for, a big, for a big portion of the time, you know, that, uh, that website gets kind of ignored because yeah. I spend so much time with the uh, Tangle 31 Aero Club, social media and all that stuff with those guys, simply because, you know, that's where the passion is at this yeah. point in time. And, you know, it was really funny walking through a big crowd of people one day, and I had 10 or 12 of these kids with me. And these people are looking at me, oh, my God, Kevin, are all these your kids? You know, one of the little <laughs> girls looked up and said, yeah, we're just from different moms. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, if so, anybody wants to help the Aero Club, oh, good. how can they do that? Call me. Here's my phone number. <laughs> you, know, we, you know, the Aero Club was... Uh, Everything we've gotten has been donated to us so okay. far. Okay. Okay. Uh, we've, I mean, we've got some sponsors with aircraft engine parts and things of that nature. Avionics. Well, we had to choke off with a bunch of money for some of that. But you know, we've got, uh, we've got, I think, a uh, PayPal account you can uh, donate through PayPal. We'll have some the, links and stuff okay. below. Yeah. In the so YouTube there's got to be a website for that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Tangle Thirty One Aero Club. Okay. So that's we'll, what we'll, we'll do. do that. And reach uh, out, help. If you, you do this, Kevin's doing an amazing work with, with the young people and the next generation of mechanics and pilots. So, Kevin, love what you're doing. Well, thank you so much. And that's Aero Club with an E on the end of it. Okay. Yeah. That's well, the deluxe version. There you go. We'll, okay. we'll make sure to put that there for you. All right. Then. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you leave comments. And make sure you visit our sponsors like 67Designs, 67D.com. They make the best camera mounts and iPhone tablet mounts for the camera, Z Vision, the brightest landing and taxi lights that are out there, Marshall Protective Services, MPSProtects.com, and Colton Mortgage for your residential mortgage, Colton taking off. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. We'll see you guys next time. In the hangar.